I will now ask our colleague, Dr. Uh, Ahmed Ghori. Dr. Ahmed Ghori is a senior lecturer at Sussex University. He did his uh, PhD in law from Turku University from Finland. He has published several books and several articles, and he is one of, one of the leading uh, scholars in international trade law. We are really grateful to Dr. Ghori that he's joining us for this session. So over to you, Dr. Ghori. So thank you very much for your very generous introduction. So what I'll do is I will uh, put up my slides if I can. So guys, um, I have no means to know who is uh, uh, watching uh, us and who is attending this uh, uh, this uh, particular presentation, but it's uh, it's very interesting uh, way of, uh, of delivering something uh, to um, to unknown number of people uh, and unknown people as well. Uh, but I'm very happy that. Um, uh, Dr. Um, Zubair Basi organized this, and I'm very happy to be uh, uh, one of the uh, participants in this. Um, so my um, assigned task is to talk about international law, not international law in general, but international law for the specific purposes of the law graduate assessment test. And I will... Um, um, as uh, Dr. Basi was saying, I will not go into the detailed introduction of what international law is all about or what are different uh, parts or, um, or, uh, or sections uh, of international law or different subjects or topics of international law in detail, but I will identify them the way I saw past uh, CAT um, papers. Uh, and the way I saw some of the uh, helping material available on this uh, particular test. And this is uh, purely my view of how I think this test is uh, being conducted or organized, the way I, uh, uh, way I understood the questions have been uh, formulated. So the idea is to give you guys uh, a good kind of um, uh, a starting point for the preparation of this particular uh, section, international law section of the uh, law GATT. So let's, uh, let's take a look at uh, the international law for law GATT. So, uh, so basically it is one of the core areas. Uh, I think there are uh, uh, more than uh, seven core areas, seven or eight core areas. So this is one of those uh, core areas that the law GATT intends to cover, uh, but it contains only 10% of weightage. So um, if you want to focus on the rest of the 90%, I won't blame you. Uh, but um, if you uh, have interest in international law and if you want to you know, uh, develop uh, uh, further uh, that interest further into some kind of uh, practice relevant to international law, it, it is a massive, massive field. And I would strongly urge you guys to, to pay um, good attention to, uh, uh, to the uh, topics of international law when you're preparing for your guide. Um, so originally, um, the uh, international law uh, section uh, included two different parts. Uh, one was uh, devoted to public international law and the other was devoted to private international law. However, um, um, the recent notification for this particular uh, test, LAGAT, um, issued by the Higher Education Commission states that the only area which is relevant to uh, the law GATT is the public international law. So uh, although I will have one slide in this particular presentation on private international law as well, uh, probably you don't have to uh, pay much attention to it. I will skip through it as well. Um, I'll brief, briefly touch on it, uh, but uh, just to give you an idea what's the difference between private and public international law. However, for the purposes of law GATT, you do not need to focus on private international law at all. Uh, however, you will have to focus on public international law. 
Uh, the recommended textbook by the HEC is uh, the seventh edition of Martin Dixon. I don't think that the HEC has actually mentioned which edition, but the latest edition is the seventh one. Um, it was published in 2013 by the Oxford University Press. It's a, it's a bit of a pricey book for Pakistan. I think it's about 45 uh, pounds. 44, 45 pounds. I don't know how if it is available in Pakistan. I'm sure it will. It would be because it is one of the major textbooks which is referred to uh, in international law teaching in Pakistan. Um, if, uh, for example, uh, it isn't. I mean, if you don't have it, uh, online access is also possible. I think you can buy online access as well via Lotro. And if uh, you are not sure. How Lotro works, feel free to get in touch and I'll be more than happy to help. So, um, so let's move forward. Uh, main topics, uh, these are the topics, uh, guys, that I have basically picked from the uh, Martin Dixon's book. These are basically the chapters, the way Martin Dixon's book has been organized. Uh, because uh, the way I looked at the past um, that papers, question papers, I saw that it has a, a very decent type of a chronology. It goes the way these chapters go. So some of the questions have been picked from chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, chapter four, and the way the questions move forward, uh, you will see that the trajectory moves forward uh, with regards to the chapters of Martin Dixon's book. And this is also my understanding that uh, first few pages of each chapter uh, from this book have been focused on primarily. So if you read the introduction very carefully, and this is my personal view, all right? I'm not discouraging you to read the entire book, all right? What I'm saying is an observation based on uh, how I saw past exam papers and how those papers have been organized and formulated. So I saw that most of the questions are based on first few pages of each chapter and some of the you know, concluding parts of each chapter. Um, so uh, which means that reading introduction and conclusions is probably the you know, most important thing uh, for your preparation for uh, public international law uh, for the, uh, for the uh, log at a farm. Um, so I don't think that I have to go through this entire list, but I'll just, uh, for the purposes of clarity, I'll go through it one by one. The nature, nature of international law and international system. So what the what the international law is all about. If you go through the table of contents of Martin Dixon, the like sub uh, table of contents where uh, the um, subheadings of each chapter have been have been detailed, you will see that. Um, uh, it's a, it's a, it's not a very detailed book. It's uh, primarily meant for you know beginner uh, to uh, medium level of learners on international law. So it's not a detailed book. Uh, I would suggest that uh, go through the first chapter, first two chapters at least, because most of the questions are based on first two chapters. And then you will see that uh, some questions here and there are based on subsequent parts as well. So I will give you in subsequent um, you know, slides, I have also tried to kind of decipher some of the other um, uh, trajectories of the way the, um, the log at uh, past question papers have been formulated. So law of treaties is also one of the important topics. So is the case with international law and national law. This fourth title is perhaps more important for the purposes of uh, private international law as well. Um, but because the focus of uh, uh, focus of the um, uh, 2021 uh, log at is primarily on public international law, I do not think that chapter four would be that important. Uh, however, you never know because it recommends that uh, the uh, Martin Dixon's book is the you know starting point for this uh, particular uh, test. I would uh, suggest that go through uh, this uh, chapter four briefly as well. Personality, statehood, and recognition also a very important topic within public international law, jurisdiction, and sovereignty. Again, I'm not going through the details of what these topics are all about, but I'm just trying to give you an overview of how I understand the importance and or the significance of these topics for the purposes of law. Uh, law of the sea, I saw in some uh, past papers, I saw some questions on the law of the sea as well, but very few. 
very few. Most of the questions are based on first two chapters, as I said, um, about 20% questions are based on uh, law of treaties, uh, and, and then it goes on. And then some questions are primarily focused on the UN as well. I will try to explain that in a minute. State responsibility, peaceful settlement of disputes, the use of force. So the use of force is also one of those areas which I saw has broader coverage within the law guide. So I would say if I'm uh, the one who is preparing for the law guide, I would pick first three chapters, then a chapter uh, five, six, and then I would uh, go for chapters on the peaceful settlement of dispute and the use of force. So if I want to do selective reading, I would probably go with these topics. However, that doesn't uh, mean that other topics are not important. I'm just saying uh, on the basis of my own uh, observation, the way the past exam papers have been formulated, I think these are the most important bits. So I'm going to move forward um, with the, um, with the with the main topics again so the focus as i was saying um i i think i have summarized this before but a couple of things that uh, are probably left um the sources is the uh, majority of the questions in the past exam papers are based on sources and within those sources you will see that there is a discussion in martin dixon's book on the theories of public international as well and you will see that some of the questions are also formulated around main theories of public international law not the substantive questions though so please keep in mind that no question will ask you what a theory is all about this is very strange the way law has uh, uh, has been operating i don't know what's the purpose of this they have simply asked who is the proponent or opponent of one theory or the other theory? What are different theories? There is no exhaustive list of theories. So I'm uh, sure you understand that this will be very difficult. Uh, this, this type of a question can be very difficult to answer. But if you focus on the Martin Dix Dixon's uh, description of these theories and the uh, proponents and opponents um, brought forward by Martin Dixon, you will be probably fine because the focus of these questions, of these questions have been prim primarily uh, brought uh, out of Martin Dixon's book. So uh, again, going back to the Martin Dixon's uh, book's trajectory, uh, the uh, first two chapters, the nature of international law, which includes theories, um, and the sources of international law, these two first two chapters are pro probably the most important one. And then the focus uh, of uh, uh, about, in my uh, you know informed guess, the focus of about 25 to 30% of questions, if not even more, is based on the uh, statute of the ICJ. Uh, so I would strongly recommend, because Martin Dixon's book does not cover the statute of the ICJ as an independent topic, I would strongly urge you guys to look at the statute itself and try to go through the statute provision by provision and try to familiarize with it. Some of the questions I saw were actually based on specific articles from the statute. So if you have gone through, this is very, again, this is a very subjective way of uh, examining or testing somebody, uh, but unfortunately, this is how it is in Pakistan in most of the situations, and so is the case with LawGAD. So going through the statute would, uh, I think, be immensely helpful for you guys if you want to prepare for the LawGAD. Uh, and then uh, some, I think, in proportion, uh, about 10% of questions were uh, on the subjects of international law as well. And by subjects, um, I mean primarily states. However, some questions, particularly with regards to the old question papers, where there was a distinction between private international law and public international law. Um, some of the questions are also based on individuals as subjects of international law as well. I assume that because now the focus is primarily on public international law, individuals and corporations as subjects of international law may as well be not as important. So primarily states are subjects of international law. What are the, right, what are the rights and obligations of states, uh, which uh, primarily is, the, uh, is based on the state responsibility chapter from uh, Martin Dixon's book. So uh, as I said before, that uh, these are the few important um, topics and of course, law of treaties. Uh, law of treaties um, 
is not primarily the law of treaties. Uh, the way I looked at the past exam papers have been covered. For example, there is no question on Vienna Convention on Law of Treaties or different provisions of the Vienna Convention on Law of Treaties. However, there are a lot of questions um, on different types of treaties, uh, particularly human rights treaties, uh, environmental protection, protection treaties or other types of the treaties which have been signed under the uh, auspices of the United Nations. Um, those treaties uh, with their name, sometimes, uh, uh, you know, even uh, a question is based on what is this treaty all about? Uh, and then there are three, four options to pick from. Uh, so, um, so law of treaties in that sense is uh, the uh, main uh, focus of this particular, uh, this particular exam for test in my view. So when you are preparing, uh, focus on these topics and hopefully you will be fine. Uh, fingers crossed. So if it doesn't work, don't blame me because I'm just uh, giving you an informed guess. Um, but I uh, do tend to think that uh, having a few years of uh, uh, putting up the exam papers together, I uh, probably can uh, can have some certainty uh, to, to these questions as well. So let's move on. Uh, private international law, as I said before, uh, it used to be the uh, focus uh, of the law gap, but the uh, but the specific subject of private international law is not included in 2021 law gap. So I'm not going to focus on that at all and this is one of those slides that I thought that I will talk about but uh, uh, I learned um, just before this uh, presentation that this is not going to be part of this uh, uh, the 2021 log out so just ignore this if you are interested in uh, private international law that is perfectly fine uh, but not for the log out all right so for log out focus on other stuff now finally I will, in addition to what I've talked about so far, I would like to give you some further uh, uh, preparation strategy and tips. Uh, again, these are my personal uh, observations, viewpoints. If it works, it works. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Don't blame me. So uh, I would suggest the way I looked at the um, formulations of different questions, I saw that the focus is primarily on facts uh, rather than substance. Uh, facts, dates, when a particular convention has been signed, who are the parties, where it was signed, where uh, the, you know, uh, uh, the uh, headquarters of the ICJ, where the, head, uh, where the ICJ is seated, things like that. Uh, places, dates, important historical events. These are the kind of uh, facts or these are the kind of um, uh, focal points that the uh, questions uh, are focused on. So if you uh, have good memory, uh, probably that will go a long way in this particular exam or test. So uh, the next step is remember the main theories and their proponents, not the theories in substance, as I said before. They are probably not going to ask you what the positive law theory is all about or what the other theory of this or that theory is all about. They are going to ask you uh, if uh, um, a particular um, lawyer or jurist is in favor of this theory or opposed to this theory. These are the type of questions I saw. This is again a very, um, very uh, not a very sophisticated way of asking about theories, but unfortunately this is how it is. So I would say uh, pay attention to when you are reading chapter one and chapter two of Martin Dixon's book uh, and see uh, what kind of theories uh, he is talking about and what kind of uh, authors he is attributing those theories to. So if he is attributing a theory to a particular author, there might be a question uh, asking um, what this person uh, favors this theory or not. So that kind of questions I saw in the past exam papers uh, that you will probably uh, have to focus on for the preparation of your exam for your test as well. Um, Memorize, again, uh, focuses on memory in this particular test, not on really uh, how genius you are, but on memory. So the member, memorize the subcontents of different themes and how they have been classified. Themes like different contents and then sub themes within those contents like subheadings, if you want to call it, how different themes are classified, characterized or typified. For example, how international crime is classified what are 
uh, different types of jurisdiction, what are uh, different kinds of asylum. These are the types of questions I saw, uh, primarily focused on heading and subheadings. So if you are clever and you can make sense of headings and subheadings and also you know, in the introductory sections of some of the headings and subheadings, it will give you a lot of clues on what type of questions will be asked uh, with regards to those particular topics that you are focusing on. And then focus on names and objectives of main international treaties and conventions. As I said before, the focus, I, the way I saw it, of the law of treaties section in this particular test is not really on the law of treaties itself, but on treaties generally. So it is very difficult uh, to, 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 to estimate what kind of question it would be. But I would suggest that uh, primarily focus on you know, main uh, conventions uh, particularly uh, those have those that have been signed under the auspices of the United Nations, and also a focus on the conventions and treaties that the that uh, the government of Pakistan has uh, has 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 signed. Um, so that will probably give you a good indication of what those questions will be on. And then focus on previous uh, on the provisions of UN Charter. I've talked about this already. Uh, what I can add uh, here is that some of the procedural rules. Some of the questions are also based on procedural rules of the General Assembly as well as the Security Council. So when you are going through the UN Charter, go through these provisions very carefully and you will see, for example, what is the role of General Assembly, um, who are the members of the General Assembly, who are the members of the Security Council, how many are the members of the Security Council. So these are the questions like factual based questions, not really substantive questions. Law of war is uh, probably uh, due to uh, different wars Pakistan has uh, been involved in. Um, there are, I saw in some past exam papers, there are um, a few questions, a handful of questions. I would say about 5% of questions uh, about law of war as well, particularly with regards to the prisoners of war. Um, so they appear to be uh, to be interesting as well as the important topic for for the preparation of law guide. Um, so for, um, the last point you can ignore because that is based on the distinction between private international law and public international law. So with this, uh, I um, finish my presentation. So over to you, uh, Dr. Abbasi. Thank you very much, Dr. Hori. That was amazing. I think you have provided not uh, to us not only an introduction to the basic structure of the book, but also your, your uh, critical view.